So, uh, this is my Dymo label printer that I've retrofitted with a uh, power supply. Right now it's currently plugged in and we read 8.3 volts actually coming back out of the label printer into this um, thing. Power supply knows how to block the back feed. It's just giving us a voltage reading. If we actually unplug it from the computer, and now that it's just on uh, voltage here, we actually see that um, this is 7.4 volts. This is the nominal voltage of the battery. Uh, I should say, yeah, the battery of cells. And the, the two cells that we have in there are two lithium ion cells that have um, been unfortunately dead. Uh, there's this protection circuit on here, on it here. I took this out and uh, positive and negative here are just <laughs> soldered right to here. And so the nominal voltage I've just basically had this in so it doesn't go below this nominal voltage here. Um, the reason the label printer has um, a battery in it in the first place is because the current coming from the USB is not enough for the third world printer inside this uh, label printer. Um, and so what it does is that when it's plugged into the USB, it just siphons as much current as it can from the USB at any point in time to pump into that internal lithium ion battery. And then at the time of printing, we'll see that uh, it'll dump a whole bunch of current into the actual label printer and it can do its job without having to, to worry about the, the USB um, being an issue. So when we plug the USB back in, um, we'll see that um, once the thing gets recognized, the voltage here will pop right up. And there we go, 8.31. So that's uh, probably like, yeah, 4.15 uh, 4 times two. So each one of these would be like 4.2 max. So it, it seems to be just under, you know, charging it so it doesn't top it all the way up, which is to be a good citizen, that's good. Um, however, uh, a couple of things about this. The reason I did this in the first place is because these two, I mean, I'm not going to replace the lithium ion cells directly. Um, actually, I don't even know what these, uh, the size of these lithium ion cells are. But uh, they come in a plastic case, and of course they charge nearly as the same amount for a brand new printer as they do for the proprietary battery pack. Um, and so here, yeah, it's charging this up at, like it would, right? And so if we go to uh, hit print on the label, I just have some labels here. Um, let's watch to see if the current draw actually happens from here, because um, I had, suspect that the current no longer comes from the USB. When that happens, it dumps it from the battery, which is why the software requires there to be some charge on the battery before it can actually go and um, print. It actually detects that and says, hey, you can't print this, which is actually why this thing has sat <laughs> uh, just idle for, for a long time for me. So, okay. I'm gonna hit print and we're gonna watch this here. Yeah, so as you can see, um, there was a bunch of current that was drawn from the actual supply here. Um, I'm not quite sure exactly, I didn't catch it, so I'm gonna do it one more time um, to see how, how uh, high that actually catches it. I have this current limited to two amps right now. I do not believe that it would pick up more than two amps, um, but let's, let's see what it actually tries to pick up to. So yeah, it seems maybe max 200 milliamps uh, that comes out of that. Um, but yeah, um, and as we can just cut this here, let's see, the printer's fine. So um, planned obsolescence and uh, throwaway culture in our industry is ridiculous. So, um, you know, do what you can <laughs> to keep stuff like this at a landfill. I had a bunch of cartridges that I didn't want to pay more for another, um, label printer when uh, this could have done just fine. So um, I'm glad this works again. And uh, yeah, <laughs> try try your best to repair um, when you can and uh, support any of your re representatives uh, that support right to repair. Uh, this shouldn't have to be the case. Um, these are essentially proprietary battery packs with non-proprietary cells inside them. Uh, I could have just found two of these and put them inside this thing 
and that would have been fine. Um, but uh, of course not. Um, this company decided to actually spend research dollars to build a proprietary pack just so you'd have to buy it again. Um, on top of that, they don't tell you really that it's siphoning off and charging the batteries, so charging habits are probably the worst with this. I know it was for me, which is why it killed my batteries, is I I would plug it only in when I wanted to print, and I'd literally unplug it because I don't want this dangling out here, um, which never really gave the batteries a good amount of time to, to bring their charge up. And slowly, 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 they drop down below, and they probably now are cut off because of the protection circuit. And unfortunately, uh, unless I want to risk it uh, to manually charge these things up, they are dead as a doornail. So, um, an interesting design, an interesting way around the limit of USB, but bad for consumers. What they really should have just done is included a AC power pack the whole time. And really, that's, that's all it needed to happen. Cool.